Released around the world on consoles from the NES to the PlayStation, on home computers from the Sharp X68000 to the FM Towns, Puznik is a 1989 arcade tile matching puzzle game. Strangely, the Game Boy release never escaped Japan. Quite often this would be because of the lack of a market, but surely this wasn't the case with Puznik as, like I say, it was otherwise pretty widespread. The aim of the game is to slide blocks about an enclosed grid making matched sets. If two, three or more blocks of the same design come into contact with each other, they disappear. You can move blocks left or right regardless of whether they have anything on top of them, and they will descend gravitationally to the lowest available point. Now of course, the blocks are not solely in pairs. There are frequently those in odd amounts, meaning you need to figure out how to get three of them to touch without losing them by touching two. You can line them up in a row or make an L shape. When blocks are removed, ones on top will descend, allowing for chains to be made for higher points. It's a pretty weighty game. While not featuring quite the number of levels as some versions, there are 128 in total on the Game Boy, and even the early ones can take a few tries to get right. Thankfully, there are no lives to lose. Simply press start to reset the board and have another go. An attempt to overcome the lack of colour was made with the symbols that accompany a normal Puznik game. But if this proves too hard to see, pressing select while in play emblazons a number on the blocks instead. This is functional, if a little soulless. This isn't a unique concept, really. Block puzzle games were ten a penny by the early 90s. Maybe that's why Puznik never made it to the West. The market was already pretty saturated, what with Flipple, Tetris, Dr. Mario, and so on. However, it uses the formula in a satisfying and quite addictive way, and password saves after each level means you can easily pick this up to fill a spare 10 minutes. No language barrier to overcome means it's worth an import, although I wouldn't say it's the cheapest title by any means, and it doesn't have the salacious, eroge content that the arcade port had. But then, would you really want to look at nudes on a Game Boy? It's getting a little desperate.